Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about controlling broadleaf weeds in wheat. It's one of the first passes we're going to make across the field. We'll show you which products could do the best job for you. Well, you might not be ready to do this quite yet, but fungicide is certainly the talk of farming because a lot of farmers over the last few years had been using a fungicide. Hey, we're getting some good yield gains and everything, but now everybody's talking about, well, maybe I should cut back this year and maybe I should cut out that fungicide trip. Well, before you cut the fungicide, you need to understand there are cheaper fungicide options, there are lower fungicide prices, and also you may consider using a lower rate. We'll explain all that on today's show. Our Weed of the Week is a weed that's already out there in many areas of the country and it's getting more difficult to control every year. We'll explain coming up later in the show, but first here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about tilling and planting in wet soil. Now, if you're a non-farmer, you may say, well, you know, if the soil's a little bit wet, that shouldn't hurt too much, right? But boy, as a farmer, we understand that there's a critical point there where, yep, I can have some moisture, but I definitely don't want too much. Well, one of the big things that we're concerned about when we're planting seed is getting good seed to soil contact. We want that seed to be pressed firmly with soil around it, but we don't want to have compaction. And what we can have sometimes when we get wet soil is we can get sidewall compaction. So we slice through that wet ground and those walls along the side of the seed just become rock hard as they dry out later in the season. And what happens is then when the plant wants to send roots out, they've got this hard wall on either side. And instead of roots being able to spread out, the roots just kind of go up that furrow and that's it. And we end up with issues later in the season and it definitely limits our yield ability. When we talk about just tillage in general, any type of tillage in wetter soil will typically cause compaction, especially in heavy clay soils. So these soils that can normally hold a lot of moisture, unless they dry out to the right degree, what'll happen is we can form what we call a hard pan out in that soil, and it might be right at that level that we're doing the tillage at. So a lot of times people will disc, for example, on the farm, and they'll disc down to four or five inches. Well, right at the bottom of that, they will create a hard pan there, and the problem then is the roots can't grow through that very well. So when you go digging later in the summer, everything looks fairly decent, except you get down to that five inch level where you had disced at, in too wet a soil and you realize, uh-oh, I have almost no roots that are getting below that level. So I've got all this soil down below that has water, that has nutrients, that has lots of good stuff for my crop and my crop just can't get it. In some areas of the country, we've got really heavy clay soils and they get lots of moisture and don't have adequate uh, subsurface drainage. We'll see some farmers go with something like a field cultivator and run really fast and keep it shallow and try to be maybe at an inch and a half where they're just barely scratching that surface when the top soil gets a little dry on the top but it's still wet underneath and we'll see them actually create a hard pan at about an inch and a half deep. Then they'll slice through and plant corn at two inches deep and cut through it when they come back with their planter a few days later as the soil is dried out more. That's a pretty risky proposition, but we do see some guys doing that. And you know, there's just all kinds of crazy things that happen when soil is too wet. And normally what we would advise is just to wait a few days, let that soil dry out. But when it gets down towards the end of the planting window, uh, a guy's got to do what he's got to do to try and get something in the ground because having a crop is better than having nothing at all. Yeah, and that's exactly where I was going to go. Just unfortunately, we don't live and farm in a perfect world. And so, yes, as farmers, we want to have the soil with a little bit of moisture, but relatively dried out. And then we can do a good job getting out there, having good seed to soil contact, not creating a lot of compaction, either sidewall or, you know, any other type of hard pan out there. But we get against the clock at some point, we just have to say, hey, I got to take my chances. Am I going to take my chances planting late or am I going to take my chances going into a little bit wetter soil? And if I go into a little wetter soil, that means I'm going to need to fix this probably over the next few years because very often we can see what we did one year in bad conditions continue to show up for years down the road. Well, for farmers, a lot of times in the spring, there aren't a whole lot of easy decisions, but controlling our weed of the week is certainly one of them. Can you identify this week's weed? 
At Titan Machinery, our shops are busy with a brand new program from Case IH, Certified Pre-Owned. We rigorously inspect each certified machine, which is covered by a 12-month powertrain protection plan. I use this CPO seal to give you peace of mind when buying a used Case IH tractor or combine. CPO units also qualify for special financing and rewards. We're adding more CPO equipment every day, but they'll have to meet my standards first. Certified, inspected, and protected from Case IH and Titan Machinery. Some prefer to invest in fields halfway around the world in short-term solutions to long-term challenges. At Poet, we're investing in the fields we have right here at home. Cultivating communities and growing the local economy. Creating new local jobs while we create worldwide energy solutions. Helping family farms grow even as they fuel the world. Because we know that investing in a community can pay global dividends. See the world differently with Poet. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDrive Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. One of the big questions we get every year is how do I control broadleaf weed safely in my wheat? You know, there are a number of options for broadleaf control in wheat and many of them include a product called 2,4-D. Over the years, farmers have used 2,4-D because it's cheap. And you know what? I've got some weeds out there. I can spray something that only costs a buck or two. Why not use it? Well, the big reason why is because of potential injury to your wheat. Now, certain varieties are more sensitive to 2,4-D than others, and then when you have stressful weather conditions, your susceptibility to injury goes up even more. So when we look at the herbicide options today that are available for wheat, 2,4-D isn't as cheap as it used to be, and there are many other good herbicide options that are much, much safer. We're advising farmers to switch away from 2,4-D and use some of the other safer products available for wheat. Yeah, so that's typically why we're talking about Wide Match and Husky. And if you want to blend something in with those products, Wide Match, for example, it's fantastic on Canada thistle. It's fantastic on kochia. But then on a lot of other weeds, maybe not the best thing out there. So a lot of people throw 2,4-D with it. What we suggest instead, in most cases, you can get by with something like one of the addition products. Those are sulfonyl ureas. So when you use that, and they're dirt cheap, I mean, it, it only costs a little bit of money. It's going to be at least as inexpensive as what 2,4-D is, and it's going to be safer to the crop, and it maybe gives you a little bit broader spectrum overall. So I guess I just look at it as, hey, I'll throw the SU in, and then I'm going to have a really good combination together with the wide match but otherwise if you want just one straight product husky generally does pretty well on most weeds back to those su's brand a lot of guys switched away from them because of resistant kochia and guys are like well it doesn't kill kochia anymore so i'm gonna have to switch away to something else guess what if you're mixing it with wide match for example you're gonna kill the kochia so now you got yeah. the kochia under control let's not forget about all the great things those su's were doing for us they were killing almost all the other weeds out there we were just weak on thistle and kochia what a perfect tank mix partner for those SUs with right. Wide Match. So you just have to look at what weeds do I realistically have in my field, and then you look at the weed spectrum on some of these products for a couple of bucks, you can kill most of the weeds in your field. All right, I want to come back to Husky too, because I made the comment, it's one straight product, and what I should have said is it's one premix product, because it's actually a combination of two different herbicides. The old Buck Troll that I'm sure you're very familiar with, 
great product, no, no soil residual or anything, but it's excellent at burning down things like lambs quarters and a number of other weeds out there. And then along with it, you've got an HPPD, somewhat similar to Laudus or Callisto that you might use in corn. Well, that HPPD gives you a totally different mode of action. We really haven't used that prior to Husky coming in the market. We haven't used that mode of action in wheat at all. So it's a nice choice, does give you some residual. And you know, you got this combination out there. Well, it's great. So I can go Husky, I can go Wide Match Plus and SU. I've got a couple of really good options there. Well, there's more options than there have ever been before, and there's more names out there, which can get a little bit confusing. Yep. When you see lots of different premixes of some of the products that we just mentioned, you take one active ingredient here and mix it with another active ingredient, and all of a sudden you have a new name. You don't necessarily have completely new chemistry on the market, but kind of keep that in mind if you're talking to your dealer about, hey, what options do I have for wheat? They may have four or five different products that you've never heard the name of before. Just look at what the active ingredient ingredients are. We see a lot of starane getting premixed into some of these things uh, and other products. They're definitely good products. You just have to look at where the price point is to see, hey, maybe this is a better one to mix with a base product like a wide match or a Husky. All right. And talking about these mixes, usually people are putting something from wide match or something from Husky together with a grass killer. We're not real big on that if you have lots of grass because it's probably going to antagonize the grass product and your grass control might go from 99% down to 90 or 95%. So this isn't a big deal if you only have a few grass plants in the field, but if you've got a major grass problem, we would strongly encourage you spray the grass product first come back a week later and spray the wide matcher husky one of the worst broadleaf weed problems in wheat and other crops is our weed of the week we'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show we know that the future is liquid that's how agroculture liquid fertilizer creates the highest quality products on the market because we're committed to finding the best raw materials at the best price possible and getting them from us to you in the most sustainable responsible ways possible agroculture liquid fertilizers helping you grow the future if you could see how nitrogen loss causes yield loss you'd fix it. So fix it right, with the stabilizer proven to reduce all three ways nitrogen escapes. Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager. It keeps nitrogen in a more readily available form longer. With today's market and environment, it's a high priority to keep your nitrogen on track. To higher yield with Nutrisphere N. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioAg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. One of the most popular questions Darren and I have had over the last year is, do we think crop protection prices are coming down? And already last fall, I, I took a look back 
because if you go back to just 10 years ago, you look at the fall of 2005, we had really low commodity prices. And when you compare herbicide and insecticide prices to back then, you know what? We're actually less expensive on most herbicides and most insecticides today than we were 10 years ago when crop prices were less than half of where they are now. So are crop protection products really coming down more in price? No way, except for one category. Fungicides. Fungicides have gone up in price over the last 10 years. Now granted, we've had many advancements, many new products coming out, many different ways to use them. We're understanding them better. We're getting a lot more yield gain. So I get it that the companies went up in price, but here's the good news for 2015. Most of the fungicides have come down in price. There are more rebate programs. Some of the products just flat out came down. There are generic options. There are more premix options. Just a lot of choices now for fungicide. So before you cut the fungicide, I'd go back and refigure your return on investment numbers because with a lower cost, now maybe your return on investment will be just as good, if not even better, than last year. One of the other topics with fungicides has been half rates. Well, when can I use half rates? We hear a lot of results published in farm papers and, and just from dealers across the country that, wow, half rate in certain situations may work as well as a full rate. When you think about crop that's really small, like let's take wheat right now. When we've got wheat in the northern part of the United States that's just a few inches tall, it's not a big plant at all. It's not going to take much product to cover that plant. So yes, if you want to have more residual, then I get it that you want to use a higher rate, okay? But if all we're trying to do is real early in wheat or real early in soybeans or real early in corn, all we're trying to do is control some diseases right then, you don't need a full rate. We would just encourage you, you need to follow the label, okay? But I will tell you that a lot of farmers around the country are using half rates with great success. And you know what? Now, instead of spending $12 or $14 or even $10, you can spend $5 or $6 or $7. Well, boy, if I can get the same yield gain for half the money, then all of a sudden I say, wow, hey, that's a pretty decent return on investment, especially if I can combine it with my herbicide. That's what we're doing on our farm for wheat. We're doing that in corn. We're trying some work in soybeans sprayed real early, but even when we spray just a little bit later at say R1 or R2, you know what, that plant isn't near full size, but we're out there spraying insecticide. We're spraying foliar fertilizer, pretty easy to throw in a fungicide. Just have to keep in mind with any fungicide application that fungicides don't move around in the plant very well. So getting good coverage is absolutely critical, yep. whether you're using a full rate or even more so when you're using a half rate. So when should you consider using a fungicide? Let's look at corn and soybeans and wheat and exactly when we expect to get the best gains. Wheat, for example, is generally the first crop that we're spraying in the spring. We like to spray that right at that herbicide timing where we've got four or five leaves out. So for guys that say, I'm gonna scout and then I'll, if I start to see something, I'll, I'll get after it. Boy, it's really hard to time that because when we think about fungicides, they're really preventative products. They're not very good at curative activities. Let's talk product real quick. A lot of people have said, well, boy, generic tilt is two bucks an acre. Should I go that way? Okay, well, you can, and that's a lot better than nothing. But what we would suggest is maybe try some other products too. There is generic quadris out there, half rate, three or four bucks, something like that. You could certainly run a low rate of Preaxor for maybe five or six bucks. Try some of these things yourself and just see, hey, am I gaining enough yield to pay for the difference. If it's if it costs me four bucks extra and I'm gaining two bushels, well, then that's a no-brainer. If it's costing four bucks extra and I'm not gaining any yield, then, hey, I gotta go with the cheap option. All right, in corn, we look at that V4 to V7 timing as where we're gonna start spraying fungicides in crop. For me, though, I really prefer V6 to V7. If you could time that out on your farm, that's where we'll normally see the best gains. Okay, and in terms of products there, really kind of the same thing. Most people are looking at equation or headline, or what we would again suggest is take a look at some of these combination products like Preax or Quilt. There are a number of different combinations out there. Stratego Yield's really good as well, and so is Fortix. Well, it's just a big deal to prevent resistance. That's why we're going to these multiple yep. mode of action type products. You know, when you look at soybeans, there isn't a lot of fungicide use early in the season in most cases. Many farmers are gonna wait until at least R1 when they start treating for white mold, otherwise R2 or R3 when we're at full bloom to first pod before we're putting a majority of the fungicides going on soybeans. There have been some studies now showing Fortix at R1 is going to reduce the incidence of sudden death syndrome or at least delay the onset of sudden death syndrome. So that might be something that you hadn't heard before, 
might be worth trying in an SDS area. I was just going to say as well, if you've got heavy insect pressure out there, especially like soybean aphids, yeah, point. we can see diseases getting in there as well. So if yep. you have to spray bug spray, chances are putting a fungicide with it may help protect that plant too. So you can cover up those open wounds, so to speak, and prevent disease from getting in through those spots. Well, again, the good news we have for you today is fungicide prices have come down from last year. So take a look at those real hard and take a look at reduced rates early. Try some things out on your farm and just look hard at return on investment. And speaking about a good return, you should get one by controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Duo herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. and in many cases, it's resistant to ALS and Roundup. Yeah, and not only that, you know, this is one of the weeds when they were first talking about drought tolerant crops, where I was telling researchers at BSF and Monsanto and any of these companies that were working on this, I said, why don't you guys just isolate whatever it is in kosher, because that seems to survive in terrible drought, and it's still thriving. Back in the 30s, I heard stories about how guys would actually use that for cattle feed because nothing else would grow, it was so dry. So yeah, kochia is a very tough plant. Okay, when you think about it, it is just an annual weed, so it shouldn't be that bad. It's not a perennial or anything. The challenge with it is it has so many growing points, even at a very early growth stage. So when you look at kochia at two to four inches, boy, that's about as big as you ever wanna see it. You wanna get herbicides out there at that time. You don't wanna let it get six inches, eight inches of foot tall. Otherwise, there are so many growing points. What often happens, no matter which herbicide you choose, is we can burn that plant down a ways, and then it just sprouts up again and starts regrowing the next week or two down the road. So the trick is you got to make sure you're using a good, strong rate, because as soon as Darren describes that, I'm saying, hey, the guy used the right product, just didn't use the right rate. Well, anyway, when it comes to the right product, yes, Roundup has worked great for years, but now we're seeing Roundup resistant kochia in addition to the ALS resistant kochia we've seen for a long time. So let's talk about strategies and how you're gonna control that. My first choice in soybeans, and this is where we have the worst problem with kochia, my first choice is you gotta use a three pre program. So we're talking a yellow, metribuzin, and a PPO like Authority or Valor. Then post emerge, we don't have any good options. Yeah, nothing. I was gonna say, sure, Cobra, you're gonna take the pre's and Cobra, leave the post for me because yep. there's nothing that's gonna get it. Cobra is the best and you're only probably talking 60% control. That's it. So you have to have the three pre's out there. Otherwise, you might as well forget about it. I hate to say this, but you may end up having to disc up your soybeans unless you get good pre-control in Roundup resistant kochia areas because Roundup isn't going to do it. Okay, well, if we're looking at wheat, there's really one good pre-emerge option and that is Sharpen. You can use a couple ounces of Sharpen in front of wheat. If there is any kochia up, you can definitely burn it down, but you have to use the right additives. You're probably going to need to throw a little bit of Roundup in with the Sharpen to burn down any potential grasses that are out there. Also, you're probably going to need some oil in there to heat that sharpen up to do a good job. Okay, post-emerge wide match is great. Husky's pretty good. Turning to corn, verdict down is excellent, but you could also use balance flex. Even triple flex and sure start aren't too bad. And post-emerge in corn, we got all kinds of choices, especially status. That's my favorite, but the HPPDs, Callisto, yeah, Loudest, Impact, Armazon. We're seeing a lot of guys Armazon. mix dicamba in with those HPPDs uh, too, and that does well. Yeah, buckdrill's not that bad, especially when it's together with atrazine. So you got a whole bunch of choices in corn. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH.
How deep is too deep with herbicide incorporation? Depending on which pre-emerge residual herbicide you're using, the depth of your tillage to work the herbicide into the soil needs to vary. For example, when you look at the pre-emerge herbicides typically used for corn like Outlook, Dual, Harness, and Surpass, they are all group 15s and shoot inhibitors. What that means is they're going to attack the weeds above where the seed germinates in the soil rather than below. Since most grass weeds germinate in the top half to one inch of soil, for effective weed control, you need to keep the herbicide as concentrated as possible in that top inch. Other herbicides like Treflan and Sonlan, for example, root inhibitors, they can be buried deeper in the soil in order to concentrate in the root zone of the weeds that they're intended to stop. Add to that the fact that both of these products have a higher level of volatility risk, and the recommendation is to spray them on at the same time you're tilling them in in order to minimize any potential loss of product. If you're applying pre-emerge herbicides this spring, check with your agronomist about each of the products you'll be using. Where do they actually kill the weeds? Is there a volatility risk? And how deep is too deep for incorporating them if I really want them to work 100%? That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. The math for getting higher yield potentials is simple. Four is greater than two. Steiger Road Track Series tractors give you proven Case IH Quattrek technology helping you cover more acres in less time. And with four independent oscillating tracks, you'll also minimize ground pressure and compaction for a better growing environment, all of which adds up to higher potential yields. The world of farming is changing. Be ready with Case IH. Lost time and spill product cost your farm money. The AgriLite conveyor system has one of the fastest product transfer speeds on the market with virtually no spillage. Over 10 feet of horizontal swing gives you the ability to dispense product with precision and eliminates any need to reposition. AgriLite conveyors are designed with ease of maintenance in mind and allows for complete installation or removal in less than an hour. Designed to save you what your farm needs most, time and money. AgriLiteTrailers.com Lightweight, efficient, dependable. I wish I could apply all the PK and micronutrients this crop needs at planting. You can. When your soils are not excessively nutrient deficient, you can apply a whole season of PK and micronutrients when you plant and get top yields at harvest. AgroLiquid's exceptional nutrient compatibility and superior efficiency allows you to prescription apply everything your crop needs safely and conveniently. Research proves it. For more info, go to agroliquid.com. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Cornhead from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but this week be sure to tune in to Ag PhD Radio. It's the live program we have each day on Sirius XM Channel 80 at 2 p.m. Central where we answer your phone calls live. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Why are many farmers reducing tillage? Reduced tillage has shown to increase soil's organic matter levels, reduce erosion potential, improve soil structure, and increase microbial activity and soil life. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.